Not very long ago, on the internet, I asked for you guys to help me out and ruin a cocktail by changing one word. We did that. People liked it. They wanted more of it. I had a lot of responses to that request that didn't make it into the episode, so let's just do a sequel. Let's do more ruin a cocktail by changing one word. And I'm going to get right into it with too many users on here wanted me to make, which is called a mold fashioned. Mm, where would you start with that? Too many users on here suggested that it should probably have blue cheese in it, which was a great idea. So we're going to make a mold fashioned and we're going to start by putting a nice chunk of blue cheese straight into the bottom of our glass. Soak your cheese cube with some Angostura bitters, you know, two, three dashes, whatever you like, it's to taste. But that won't get us the sweetness that we need for an old fashioned. No, no, for that, you're going to need some Ken's Steakhouse chunky blue cheese dressing because we need to have a sweetener, just about a quarter, boy, that's thick. Oh boy. Oh God. <laughs> oh, ah, we're really starting things off with a bang. Uh, believe it or not, we're gonna add two ounces of bourbon to that a glass and an ice cube. It doesn't want to stir. It's like fighting me. Oh. Oh. It looks worse than it is. I'm choosing to believe that. This, of course, is garnished with an orange twist. You know, I don't think it's necessary, but you know, I do think that there's something to be said for just adding a few crumbs right to the top of your ice there. There is something truly special about the combined smells of orange and blue cheese. That's such a wonderful smell. This is for you, too many users on here. Ah! Yeah! Jesus Christ, that's bad. I mean, it's immediate. I grew up on the Jersey Shore. We had like an 18 or 19 foot bow rider, piece of shit. This is the taste of cutting up into uh, like F Cove or something like that. Like the, the bottom churning up, you know, and your, your gas exhaust, your exhaust, everything like that. It's that taste. I mean, it's instant. Down at Caddis Island State Park around there, you know. Oh man. It looks like just something that you left out for a month. There are weird flavor profiles in here that I'm just gonna recall before I go back in. And that's kind of what made it taste a little bit like the bay. It's because there's like grassy notes in it, strangely, that kind of keep coming back. And it almost like made me think of dill. It's like wave upon wave of flavor blasts. <laughs> that is an indescribable flavor. I, I honestly, I, I, I'm having a hard time explaining this one. That is, I don't know what you call that. It tastes like bourbon and blue cheese. I've had hot wings with some bourbon and blue cheese dressing many a time. So there's a part of me that was like, this doesn't have to be bad. Now it tastes a little bit like this kid I grew up with their basement, which was always filled with cigarette smoke. Yeah, mildew basement and cigarette smoke. I'm not gonna have any more of that now. We're all done with the mold fashion. The mold fashioned is an abomination. It should go straight to hell. Uh, full disclosure, uh, this is also a computer and I've got a mouse and a keyboard that you don't see. So I'm looking at the screen. I don't know what I'm about to scroll into. What is it? Oh, it's the French 57. Dallas Jordan Jams. I love this. I think that this is just mwah, French 57 with Heinz 57. You might find that they got 57 sauce out there now. That is not Heinz 57. That's like a new product, just came out. Heinz 57 is tomato ketchup. Uh, does the ketchup replace the simple in this? Yes, that is what it does. So we're gonna start with some lemon. <laughs> One ounce of lemon juice. Heinz 57 varieties of ketchup. Heinz 57. Half an ounce. And now we need two ounces of gin. We're gonna use aviation gin for this because I'm throwing down a gauntlet and inviting Ryan Reynolds to try a uh, French 57. <laughs> Man, that's a smell. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> really, that gin ketchup combo really strikes you. you know, it hits you in the nose there. Uh, we got our lemon, we got our gin and our ketchup. I'm gonna add like a small amount of sweetness to this. Safety sugar, about a quarter ounce. Shake that up. Now, normally a French 75, you add champagne to it. Uh, today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna use a drink mate to carbonate what is in my shaker. 
which I love that I can do that. I've been using Drink Mate on the show forever. I love these guys. They finally said, hey, Greg, we love that you love us. Want to do a thingy? And we're doing a thing now. They're a sponsor of the show. And if you want to pick up one of these cool ass machines, you can go to drinkmate.us. Use code how to drink at checkout from now till the end of the year. You're going to get 20% off. And then starting next year, you're going to get 10% off. So you can use them to carbonate anything, which is super fun. And we're just going to pour our drink straight in there. Colder liquids absorb CO2 better. And I'm gonna get my glass. I mean, all things equal, that's a nice looking drink. It's obviously the work of the devil. Does this get a lemon twist? I think it does. And there you have a French 57. My toast for this one is only in America. <laughs> wow, those are things I didn't dream were possible. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not yet ready to call it good, but it's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. So we get that lemon and tomato nose, which is actually not such a terrible combo. If you're objective about it, like lemon and tomato, that, that's like a lot of Italian cooking does that. Fizzy, tomato, sweet, a little weird there. <laughs> it takes a stranger turn. The gin and the ketchup, they are having a, a party. What's up with that? Mmm, that's something. Mm-hmm. It tastes a little bit like if you took pine saw and melted Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Which Jolly Ranchers? Uh, green apple. There's a, a, a twist there where the carbonic acid and the tomato and the lemon and the gin are all percolating at the same time. And it is, um, I assume, like the taste of what a meth lab smells like. I just assume. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we should rename this the Methyltini. <laughs> See what kinds of fun you can get into with a machine that'll carbonate anything? Thank you, drink mates. Move this chain of shame right down the line. Post Nuke Productions suggested the Pepper Plane. It's a paper plane lengthened with Dr. Pepper. Who am I <laughs> to question your wisdom, Post Nuke? I think you might be onto something. Let's try that out. It begins with three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Next, I want three quarters of an ounce of Epirol, three quarters of an ounce of Amaro Nonino, and three quarters of an ounce of bourbon. We're gonna use our trusty, reliable Yellowstone bourbon. Now I'm gonna shake that drink up. This drink is normally served in like a coupe, but we're gonna lengthen it, so I'm gonna put it into this glass. This glass and all glasses on how to drink are provided by Visky. Uh, they make lovely glassware, and if you need lovely glassware to make drinks of your own, this key could probably help you out that. Check out the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner. Use code HOWTODRINK15 at checkout, and you will get 15% off of your entire order at this key. We're going to now lengthen this lovely beverage with a little Dr. Pepper. And there you have it, a pepper plane. Uh, the Dr. Pepper seems to be who have settled on the bottom, but let's see uh, how it is like this, layered. Harumph, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate that at all. <laughs> Compared to Dr. Pepper, it's hella bitter. And like, there's a jarring kind of connection there. The sweetness of the Dr. Pepper is maybe what's weird, but the flavors of the Dr. Pepper, the, the, the flavors of the pepper, I don't know what the hell Dr. Pepper is, nobody does, but that flavor actually goes kind of well with a paper plane. Let's try this again. You get this like sweet, long Dr. Pepper, this drink is almost good. What the hell's wrong with it? This could definitely be a lot worse. Let's stir it up and see what it is like without it being layered. No, that's actually weirdly good. It's funny because Epirol is way less bitter than Campari to the point where I would almost say like, it's not even a bitter. I think it's because of the lemon juice. It is like real bitter. Like this tastes a little bit like you threw Campari into a Dr. Pepper to me. A pepperoni. Oh God. <laughs> well, I'm making that now, the Dr. Pepper Negroni, otherwise known as a pepperoni. That is the bonus drink that's going right into this episode right now. The pepperoni. So one ounce of gin, one ounce of Campari. We need an ounce of Dr. Pepper. The Dr. Pepper is gonna take the place of our sweet vermouth. A pepperoni might benefit from a small amount of maraschino. So I'm just gonna have that on standby. Stir that over ice. The pepperoni. I feel like the pepperoni can only be made with the most offensive Italian accent you can muster. <laughs> Obviously a pepperoni gets a twist of orange. Here we go, the pepperoni. 
Why is that so good? <laughs> Why is that so good? That should be awful. It's a little sweeter than a regular Negroni, but not that much sweeter. It's still plenty of Campari. It has like vanilla notes to it that, you know, some of that is probably from the Campari, but no, it's, I think it's mostly from the Dr. Pepper. Honestly, if you've ever made a Negroni with Aperol, 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 whatever, however the fuck they say it, Aperol does not do what Campari does to a drink. Aperol's got nowhere near the level of bitterness and it's much sweeter. This is more balanced than that. So <laughs> orange and vanilla, you might think creamsicle, but no, 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 not, not creamsicle, like a bitter orange and vanilla. I don't know. I think the pepperoni might be better than the Negroni. Let's just see what like a quarter ounce of Maraschino will do here. A bar spoon of Maraschino would be maybe interesting. This is too much. Weirdly, the flavors are now combining in a way, I would say even conspiring in a way to push it into the direction of Coca-Cola. Nah, don't do the Maraschino, you just don't need it. The pepperoni, it's actually okay, maybe even good. I'm serious. Please try that out, tell me how insane I am. So let's move along and again, I made this list a long time ago. At some point I compiled a bottle and ingredient list. I picked them up, I put them on the show. I don't know what the next drink is. Ah yes, the last gourd. A last word with pumpkin spice. I don't know. Uh, courtesy of Levy Angel 97 I love that idea. I thought I was going to have to make pumpkin spice syrup for this drink, but I don't. Because when I went to the liquor store, <laughs> keep in mind I'm filming this like the day after Halloween, they had Pumpkin spice liqueur from balls. Oh, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. One ounce of this stuff. One ounce of lime juice. One ounce of chartreuse. And an ounce of gin. Here we go. Would you just look at that color? Wow. This is the last gourd, courtesy of Levi Angel 97. I hope that's the year you graduated high school and not the year you were born. This drink has an unbelievable amount of evolution. I am a little bit staggered. A little fresh grated nutmeg would be great on this drink. I don't have my fresh nutmeg, but I know it would be good here. First off, great color, orange. <laughs> Opens up with like a, um, a chartreuse lime kind of thing. Gives a little bit of a skunky vibe in a not unpleasant way that segues through honeydew into vanilla. Boy, that's a lot of chartreuse. I love that, but moderated. Then you get into what I guess we can call pumpkin spice, which is, in this case, caramel, vanilla. I mean, I could do with some more spice in my pumpkin spice. I don't know if that pumpkin spice liqueur is phenomenal. You throw a little of this simply organic pumpkin spice mix on there. I don't think I would recommend using the balls, balls, the balls pumpkin spice liqueur. I think you can do better kind of making your own thing. Yeah, there it is. That's great. That works really well. Totally balanced. We have the representation of the caramel and the, the vanilla and the ginger. The ginger is actually coming in quite loud now without being like hot and burning ginger, but ginger flavor. And uh, the clove on the finish against that chartreuse. What does chartreuse taste like? In this case, I always get black pepper notes on chartreuse, always. Um, in this case, additionally, I think I'm getting something vegetal, something a little bit skunky because of probably the lime juice. I like it. Yeah, like I don't have any uh, objection, honestly. The color is right. I just wish that Ball's pumpkin spice liqueur had a little bit more spice to it. The last gourd. Thank you, Levi Angel. It's great. I'm all about it. This is user CHDN said, a worst word or alternatively, a dark and wormy, which is a dark and stormy made with Malort. Just what I wanted. Sometimes you guys came in with a couple of suggestions. I can only take one. So we're gonna make a dark and wormy as opposed to a worst word. So to do that, I'm gonna cut a lime. I'm going to squeeze the entire contents of that lime into my glass. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Malort. Two ounces of Malort. Three ice cubes for this glass. It's too big. And uh, I'm gonna top that up with some Reed's ginger beer. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's nothing dark about this at all. Well, there it is, a dark and wormy. Let's see how it is. Ooh. Oh, man. Wow. The Malort 
almost completely overpowers the ginger beer. Almost completely. It is aggressively bitter and dry. And then after it does that for quite a while, you get a little, hi, I'm Ginger. Hey, nice to meet you. Nasty shit. I mean, I can't speak from experience, but I think pee probably tastes better. Is there like some ratio where all of a sudden the ginger beer isn't getting its ass kicked? Nope. Let's see what's next on my list. Fensis, F-E-N-X-I-S, suggested a three mile island iced tea. Not the only person to suggest something very, very similar. Let's do it, baby. We're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of Midori. Three quarters of an ounce of the cheapest rum I could find, Palo Viejo. Three quarters of an ounce of tequila. We're gonna use 1800. Three quarters of an ounce of gin. Three quarters of an ounce of triple sec. I opted to replace the, the vodka in this drink with our green stuff, with the Midori. Long Island iced tea calls for three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, but we're gonna go for an ounce and a half. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And I did originally plan to make this drink like a Long Island iced tea with Coca-Cola. They have an ingredient called 7X. It's like Miello oil, nutmeg oil, coriander oil, all these things suspended in the seventh ingredient, which is grain alcohol. And you use a few drops of that per big batch. That's how you make Coca-Cola. This is not a big secret to me, but I've been working for quite a while on a drink for Nuka-Cola, which according to in-game lore is made with 17 extracts. So I had to come up with a way to make 17X as opposed to 7X, and I did. <laughs> Since it's a three mile island iced tea named for a meltdown, I think going with the ingredients of Nuka-Cola make a hell of a lot more sense. And I am not exaggerating here, like one drop of 17X extract, maybe two. God, it's remarkable how potent this stuff is. A few milliliters goes to a huge batch when I'm making Nuka-Cola. Shake this drink. I didn't think we were going to need it, but since I'm not adding Coca-Cola to this, which is carbonated, I have to carbonate the drink. Carbonate that drink. This is the smaller bottle size, which is really perfect for making cocktails. Woo, there's a lot of pressure in there. I love the way it looks. I'm very happy. This is the Three Mile Island Iced Tea. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> there's so much going on in that. Whoa. All right, so first off, it's very easy to drink. It is sweet and approachable. Is it too sweet? Just a little. I think you could dial the sweetness back on this. Normally you would be using a fully formulated Nuka-Cola. Here we are making Nuka-Cola in the glass, so to speak. It's got a floral, fruity component that is right up front and in your face that settles into a mild sweetness on its way out. A Long Island iced tea is a drink that's meant to taste more or less like iced tea. That's the whole idea is that you can hide a lot of booze in it and it doesn't really taste like there's any booze in it. This does that. It tastes like a lemonade or an iced tea with no booze in it, but there's quite a bit of booze in it and it is neon green and made with Nuka-Cola. Do I ever want to have it again? Not particularly. I do think that on this particular formulation, I could have dialed the sweetness down. I was flying by the seat of my pants. It was a really last minute decision to remove the Coca-Cola and go with my Nuka-Cola formulation here. But as a result, I wasn't really sure where to land with the sweetness. So on the whole, I've had worse drinks even in this episode. This is really not terrible. I just wish it was a little less sweet. I think maybe more lemon would help it, actually in this case. That's a little better. That balances it out a lot more. Refreshing, green, slightly melony. There's some yellow cake in there. There's some, you know, the flavors of a, a cola for sure. I endorse this beverage as the Three Mile Island Iced Tea. That is it on round two of Ruin a Cocktail by Changing One Word. Thank you so much for your input. I may be asking for some more. I still have a huge stockpile of responses to go through. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more in the comments on this one. Keep them coming. I love doing this. This is so much fun. We found some good ideas. We found plenty of bad ideas. This episode was uh, refreshing in the most disastrous ways. Please like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. You can get into it with me on Discord and we can have a conversation about what I should do next. 
And in the meantime, if you are new to the show, well, I've been making it for forever. Here are more episodes of How to Drink that you could enjoy. Thank you, good night, and good luck. I love you.